Although frustrating to most, but fascinating to some biologists, flies are capable of remarkable aerial acrobatics. They can hover precisely in place, but are nimble enough to dart through a cluttered kitchen. Compared to hummingbirds, vertebrates that are capable of similar aerial agility, flies use a surprisingly small set of brain cells called neurons to control the motion of their wings. In birds, bats, as well as many other flying insects, the muscles that do the work of powering the wing are also responsible for steering. In flies, however, these two jobs are delegated to two different groups. Large, stretch-activated muscles that coarsely power the wings back and forth, and a set of 12 tiny, neurally activated muscles that are responsible for most of the fine grain control. These 12 steering muscles are known as the direct flight muscles because they attach directly to four minute processes called sclerites at the base of each wing. By pulling on these sclerites, the direct steering muscles are able to distort the flapping motion of the wing, allowing the fly to steer and maneuver. Remarkably, each direct flight muscle is activated by only one neuron each. Thus, the fly basically uses only 12 knobs to control the complex three-dimensional path of its wing. In comparison, each of the muscles controlling a hummingbird's wing, or your fingers for that matter, are innervated by tens to hundreds of neurons, a density that allows for precise control through graded recruitment. The purpose of our study was to understand how flies can maneuver so accurately while using such a small set of neurons to control their wings. To help answer this question, we took advantage of genetically modified fruit flies that express a protein in their wing muscles that emits light when the muscles are active. In each experiment, we glued these flies to a fine metal pin, placed them in a virtual reality flight simulator, and focused a microscope on their thorax near the location of their flight muscles. Using a three-dimensional model of the fly's musculoskeletal anatomy and movies of the thorax fluorescence, we could extract sequences for the activity of each muscle over time. After examining the data from all 12 muscles and comparing them to measurements of wing motion, we discovered that the direct flight muscle system could be classified into two groups based on their activity. One group, which we call tonic, exhibited high levels of sustained activity throughout flight. Another group, which we call phasic, were typically inactive, except when the flies tried to execute rapid turns, at which time they became transiently active. Notably, we found that each of the four sclerites at the base of the wing was ex equipped with at least one tonic muscle and at least one phasic muscle, suggesting a functional division of labor in the control of wing motion. To investigate the significance of this functional division, we presented visual motion to the flies, which would make them think they were rotating and thus elicit a compensating response. For instance, here we are presenting motion to the right, which simulates the fly rotating to the left. Flies responded to this pattern of motion with slow, gradual changes in the wing stroke that would cause the flies to correct for the perceived rotation if it were not attached to the pin. In addition, visual motion also made the fly execute a greater number of rapid turns to the left and right. Although flies use both tonic and phasic muscles to execute these slow and fast turns, the pattern of recruitment was quite different. The tonic muscles responded with slow changes that were correlated with the slow turns, whereas the phasic muscles also changed activity, but these changes were primarily associated with the increase in fast turns. Because flies, like any aircraft, can rotate around three different body axes, called yaw, pitch, and roll, we vary the direction of our patterns and measure the response of each muscle to these changing directions. We found that muscles could be further subdivided based on what direction resulted in the largest response. This orientation tuning sorted according to the four wing sclerites, such that all the muscles that are inserted on the same sclerite were sensitive to a similar type of visual rotation. Based on our knowledge of how free-flying flies alter their wing motion during various flight maneuvers, we think that these groupings form the basis of distinct biomechanical modules, each responsible for a particular feature of the wing's path as it sweeps through the air. As an analogy, a sailor might make small adjustments to the rigging on a sailboat to accommodate changing wing conditions, but then use the tiller to come about quickly or avoid hitting an obstacle. Likewise, a fly might use its tonic muscles to make subtle adjustments in wing motion so that it flies straight, but then briefly recruit the phasic muscles to execute rapid turns. Unlike a sailboat, however, a fly must steer in three dimensions. To do so, it makes use of four control modules, each equipped with at least one tonic muscle and one phasic type of muscle.